What's going on guys? Matt Schaefer back here with another install for you. This one is a 2019 Porsche GT3. We did a Mosaic audio file conversion with this one. Pretty much best of the best that we could do with this car. So let's check it out. First, let me show you the under hood. This is a bunch of stuff that was built to fit within this area. Obviously we have our amplifiers, we have our system fuses. Everything is very easy to get to and super serviceable. Uh, we have two Moscone Pro 530s. These are two five channels. So this top amplifier is gonna power our front TBM Focal Utopia M tweeters. And then three and four, it's gonna be bridged to one of the eight inch Utopia M mid bass drivers in this one, the right door, this one, the left door on three and four. One and two on this one is going to go to the front Utopia M mid range. And then of course we have two subwoofers in each one of these amplifiers utopia m10 which you'll see shortly in the custom carbon fiber enclosure behind the seats i can uh, overlay what this looks like at night all lit up obviously you cannot see the lighting right now but there is rgb lighting around here this gt3 logo up here lights up uh, this lights up as well we duplicated the uh, french stitching that you see on the inside of the car brought that here this is a leather match that matches the exact leather of the inside. And then of course, we vacuum bagged these custom uh, panels that we made on the side. They are satin weave carbon fiber to basically mimic the satin weave that you see on the inside of the vehicle. So you can still get to this equipment very easily. Don't mind all the sand that's blowing on all this stuff right now. That's all this stuff that you're seeing. It's a windy day here, a lot of sand blowing up on uh, the equipment here. But uh, this panel pops off using magnets, this pops off using magnets, and these pop off using magnets. So you can get to all this equipment fairly quickly uh, without a lot of you know, deconstruction or time in doing that. You can also still get to the uh, adjustments. So the panels pop off here on the amplifier to where you can get to all the settings of the amp here and here. So again, for any adjustments, there's literally no need to pull anything here apart. We also made a false floor here. So this is all Alcantara suede that matches the interior. Uh, this is our service panel. So we can pull this up like that. And then you can get to the Moscone Pico amp, which powers our rear speakers. And then you have the factory headlight tool, even though it, it's not present in the GT3 because they bolt in. And then you have all your system fusing right there that you can easily get to. Now to show you what we did as far as the subwoofer enclosure, this is our dual 10 inch Utopia M subwoofer enclosure that we did out of carbon fiber. So basically what you see here, uh, the base of it is a birch ply, uh, Russian Baltic birch, to which then we built these supports that you can see here in the photos and then basically fiberglass the entire enclosure. Did uh, a few layers of fiberglass, finished it off, poly primed it, and then we came back and then we vacuum bagged it with the uh, this 10 ounce satin weave carbon fiber. Pretty complex of a job because of the shape. Uh, I wanted it to look pretty aggressive to be, you know, kind of fit the GT3 styling. You have the two air ducts there and there right behind where this sits so i wanted to mimic the same sort of aggressive look that lines right up with the air duct as you can see the top of the enclosure has a really cool red pinstripe that matches the red of the porsche and then you have matte black basically racing stripes that go down that hump and looking closely you can see the uh the satin weave carbon fiber that we did looks absolutely amazing, makes it pop. And then of course you have the Utopia M subwoofers with kind of like this really cool chamfered trim ring with a red pinstripe to match the pinstripe on top, which sits right there behind that black trim ring. You have these two leather inserts that basically have the sides molded in to give a finished off look. And then you have our center insert. Now this is not a port of any any type. This is a sealed enclosure. The grill there is really for aesthetics. 
So all that lights up with RGB lighting that can be controlled through an app. All right, so this is basically what it looks like when it's dark. So you have the underglow of what's underneath the enclosure to kind of make it look like it's floating. And then of course you have the uh, LED lights here in the center. And these are fully programmable so you can change whatever color or change the pulsing. Really can control it to however you want. And this is basically the app. So we have three different legs that we can control the color of each leg and the speed of the light. And of course the color of each individual um, LED strip, which is pretty cool. You have our Mosaic logo, you have the Alcantara matching suede in the center, and then up top you have more layers of black and red acrylic respectively. We also made this cool little umbrella mount. Uh, this client uh, had this Alexander McQueen umbrella that we ended up painting the skull of it red to match the, match the Porsche, so this is Porsche paint. And then we made this bracket that fits in this area here. So the GT3 does not have seats in the back. The 911 does, um, but when you go to the GT3 platform, they reduce a lot of weight, which in uh, respect to what we did, obviously we added a lot of equipment. So we did add some weight, but we did it in the most mindful way possible, right? So we used a lot of PVC. We used a lot of Baltic birch. We used carbon fiber, fiberglass instead of, you know, doing things a different approach or using heavier material. Um, we kind of kept the weight to a minimum on all the different parts of the car that we built. The rear speakers that you see here are still factory. So even though this is a really high end audio system, the rear of any car is really just meant to sound like a reflection of what you're hearing in front of you. Much like at a concert, when you're at a concert, there's not rear speakers. You're just primarily hearing the rear, the front speakers as a reflection uh, behind you. So we do the same thing in a car. So again, in any car that even is a high-end build, the rears really aren't that important. So we kept these factory. They're basically high pass at around 400 hertz and they're time delayed eight to nine milliseconds. So again, if you're planning on spending a lot of money in the back, don't do it. Spend more money up front or spend more money on your amps when building an audio system. Now, as far as the front door breaks down, the factory mid generally sits right over top of the eight inch mid base front driver. And the reason that sucks is because when you're sitting in this car, your leg literally sits perfectly in that area. Generally speaking, a mid range down low in any car is gonna bring the stage down low. So that is the most important speaker in any audio system. So we always like to put those up top on the dashboard in some sort of a pillar or a pod in order to get the sound stage correct. So in this case, we fully deadened the door minimalistically, again, taking weight into consideration, but also not justifying the sound quality for uh, rattles and resonations and all that kind of stuff. So we used sound shield behind the door and also underneath the subwoofer enclosure in the back. I'll overlay some pictures here. Uh, and the eight inch mid base Utopia M is made in a acrylic speaker adapter that bolts right to the factory. So again, nothing is modified, just bolts right in like it came from Porsche that way. Now inside the car, we have the pillars that I was speaking to you about. Obviously these are redone in the same matching Alcantara suede. We have our Utopia M three and a half. You have our TBM Focal Utopia M tweeter. And I kept these basically off axis in this case, because on axis, it's just too obtrusive. You're blocking the vent at that point. And whenever I build something, factory functionality serviceability is always number one. So in this case, it just didn't make sense to try and put those on axis. Also, in a lot of different cars, depending on aiming speakers, sometimes you can get an off axis speaker to work a lot to your advantage using the reflections of the glass inside the car. So in this case, when you listen to it, when you sit in the Porsche, it's so small and so narrow, you expect the sound stage to be equivalent to that, right? It's not a lot of room between speaker to speaker or door to door, but when you listen to the audio in this car, the stage goes well beyond the side mirrors, right? And that's because the reflections of the glass in this car are working to our advantage. So 
even though we didn't put these on axis, they almost have a better response than if they were on axis based on the reflections in the car, giving us an extremely wide stage. And we still have a, what I like to call perfectly perfect center image where it sounds like there's a, you know, six to eight inch speaker primarily right there center of the dashboard. Again, there's no speaker here, but your expectations in a car when listening to a great car audio system is that all the speakers disappear, right? I know that there's a speaker there. I know there's a speaker there. I know there's a speaker there and same on this side. But when I'm sitting here listening to music, I would swear that none of these are playing. You know, you almost have to put your hand here to be like, hey, are these playing? Because you should hear the staging there. And if you're listening to something with a full band, you should be able to understand, okay, there's the singer. He has a guitarist to his left, a guitarist to his right. He has the drummer behind him. And you should be able to gauge and understand how far away they're standing, how big of a room they've recorded this stuff in. Um, and that's the makings of a good audio system, right? I have two subs literally right behind me, right behind the seats. And you think that you would feel all this impact and all this noise coming from behind you. But as you're listening to songs with any type of kick drum, the kick drum sounds like it's coming way up on the hood, right? The subs become invisible because they're stitched in with our front mid bass and the mid bass is stitched in with the front mid range. And all that is happening up there on the center part of the dashboard. I've been doing this for a long time and any time that you can make all the speakers invisible, it's still like a captivating and really cool feeling because it feels like magic because you're staring at the speakers, but yet, you still hear this imaginary image and soundstage up on the dashboard. And once you get that correct in a car, you're basically hearing music entirely different, more than not different than you ever have heard the song ever in your life. And when we equate a good car system to a good home system, I often think that the best car system trumps the best home system because there's just more pressure inside the car. There's more dynamics inside the car that it's hard to replicate in a home setting. And the one thing most clients say when they listen to the audio system when it's done is it sounds like I'm literally front stage at a concert listening to this happen, right? You get the impact of the kick drum, you get the impact of the instrumentation and the realisticness of a guitar pick anything or a guitar strum anything like that is just really really captivating all right so to break down how this audio system works is we have three different presets preset number one is going to be our factory radio so anything that the porsche plays you're not losing any features any functionality all this stuff is still going to work just as intended by porsche um, and it's going to work through our first preset so right now we're on preset three so we would just hit this once, twice, and then we would go to preset number one, hit the enter button, and then you would essentially turn this volume all the way up. And then now this would be your master volume here. So how we interface this radio into our DSP is we use a Nav TV Zen V interface which basically takes the Toslink input from the factory amplifier underneath this seat and it plugs into the Zen piece. And that way, all of the data settings that this communicates with the factory amp is still uh, working correctly. And you're getting a, a perfect signal through a Toslink output that goes into our DSP 8 to 12 aerospace processor. So again, we're getting a perfectly clean signal from this directly into our processor. And why that's important is the factory amplifier in every single car in the modern day era, the speakers have a preset tune to make those, you know, crappy speakers, the crappy paper and plastic speakers sound the best way possible. So again, it doesn't matter if you have a Fender system, a Meridian system, a Bose system, Harman Kard, Mark Levinson, doesn't matter. They're still paper and plastic speakers. And that amplifier in the car is optimized for the tune which is essentially what we do in the cars. We tune the car for these speakers, which is why they sound so good and how we can get the imaging. These amplifiers are tuned for the factory speakers. So if those amplifiers are still in the car, unless you're correcting that signal with a DSP, you can't just swap speakers and make it sound better. So in most cases, again, if this was a portion, I just wanted it to sound better. 
you're really not just swapping out speakers and getting better sound because the car is still has a master preset EQ tune inside that amplifier. So if the paper and plastic uh, mid bass speaker can't play 200 hertz well, well guess what, there's gonna be a peak at 200 hertz in order to compensate for the speaker construction. So when we replace it with a good speaker, now we have a massive peak at 200 hertz if we don't change any EQ settings. So that is why DSP is always necessary when we're getting better audio quality. Also, since we're putting speakers in new locations, time alignment is huge. You need to have time alignment, you need to have um, phasing correct, you need to have EQ from 20 to 20,000 hertz equal across the left and right channels to get that perfect center image when you're listening to your car. So preset number one, we just went over that. Uh, all of this stuff works. Preset number two is going to be our AMAS interface. This is basically just a better way to get a good signal from our phone directly to the DSP. So we're utilizing a, a high resolution Bluetooth chip that is going to give a direct digital signal into our amplifier. And why that's better than this is at the end of the day, on preset one, you're still utilizing uh, the DAC of this, you're utilizing what this is made out of and all that kind of stuff. The quality of the parts in this is not gonna be for any kind of audio quality because they're um, you know, mass producing these, they're trying to keep costs down, and at the same time, everyone listens to compressed music anyway for the most part. So when you switch over to that AMAS, you're gonna have inherently better sound quality directly from your phone rather than listening to preset number one. Another cool thing is you can actually pair to the Porsche and the AMAS at the same time. That way you can put this on Bluetooth mode and you can put your phone on the on AMAS, outputting the audio to AMAS, but still seeing the album art and information on here. So it's almost like it's still playing through here. It's just directing the audio directly to the DSP. So really cool thing if you don't plan on doing any kind of high res player or anything like that. Number three, this is basically anything that is our high res player. So in this case, we're using an Astel and Kern SP2000. This is going to be responsible for all the um, source for, for the sourcing of what we're listening to. So what a player like this is gonna do for you is it's gonna play one music in its native format. So a lot of music has been natively recorded in a higher format than what we're used to listening to on say Spotify or Pandora or iTunes, a much higher bit rate than what we're used to. So uh, for instance, this song was remastered or this album was remastered in 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Um, and basically the difference between a track like this and this same track on iTunes is the iTunes track would roughly be about five, six, seven megabytes in size. This track here is gonna be probably around 60 to 75. So you can see how much information is in this track versus that track. Um, obviously, a few other things that you're gonna benefit with having your music playing through something like this is there is a big gray area to what is and what isn't high res. And as far as high res goes, we like to think that it's all music. If it's high res, it's much better. Well, it's not true. Um, the gray area is gonna fall with a few things, right? So a remastered track like that track that you're listening to, it's remastered. So there's been a um, different creative uh, breakdown of this track. So some frequencies might be different. There might be things that are enhanced. Um, which is why it's a much more enjoyable experience than what you've listened to in the past. So just because it's high res doesn't mean you're hearing better quality because it's high res. It might be because it's remastered. So it's a digital, it's a different digital track than what you're listening to. Um, also is you're just listening to it through much better DAX of this versus say an iPhone. So this has a DAC for the left and the right channel and they're some of the best DACs in the world currently for any kind of you know, player like this. So it's gonna break down the, uh, the digital to analog conversion much better than your phone's going to, right? And because of that, the depth, the width, 
the separation of everything that you're listening to is going to get much wider. It's going to get much deeper. And that's because of the DAX of this versus your phone. So again, is that because it's high res? No, it's because you have a better DAC breaking down the digital file. So again, these are some of the gray areas that you have to understand when it comes to what is and what isn't high res. So just because it's labeled high res doesn't mean it's really high res. It could be because it's been remastered. It could be because it's playing on a much better DAC. Um, so again, just a few things to kind of understand about what is and what isn't high res. Because again, if we have something like Credence Clearwater, that's not high res. That was recorded on, you know, crappy mics and it's gonna sound the way it sounds. And just because you see it in 24 bit 192 doesn't mean that has any variance or any reasoning to why it is high res. It's not a better track. You know, it could just be the same as what you've heard before. But the fact that it's been remastered might say, okay, now there's not background noise. A few different frequencies within the track are different, which is gonna make us uh, perceive it differently. And then also, again, coming down to the DAX, you might have more separation and might have more understanding of what's actually happening in the track. So just keep that in mind when it comes to these players. But this player plays on our preset three. This is how we're gonna get the best sound quality within this car. I've had a lot of questions in the past of why analog and the reason is is a few things so i use this in line out mode so if i put this on it goes in line out mode so it basically applies two volts output uh fixed directly to the processor and the reason i use the analog version is because i'm one want to utilize the dax in the player number one if i go digital i'm now using the dax of the DSP in order to break down these tracks. So at that point, this is just a very um, expensive user interface or USB stick, if you will. Um, so again, taking advantage of the DAX in the player and then also being able to process any kind of codec that's on the player, right? I can play DSD, I can play 24192, anything below that, no issues. So if I was going digital out, I wouldn't be able to play any kind of DSD files from the unit. So now I have to be extremely selective in what I physically have on my player. So analog out is how I always hook it up. Again, utilizing the equipment in here. Obviously going through the DSP, it's still going to get converted digital back to analog um, for the crossovers and all of the settings that we've done. But the input signal is inherently better going through analog than we've done through digital. We've done a lot of A-B comparisons to kind of figure out the better measure for this. Um, and like I said, that along with the codec, uh, as far as what we can physically play from the player, it's, a, it's an absolute no-brainer. So guys, that's pretty much the full breakdown. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I kind of got a little bit more technical than I do on some of my other videos. I just know that I always have a lot of questions about different nuances of the install and why I do it the way that I do it. So I try and answer that in a video like this, but hopefully that didn't get too off the beaten path of what we actually did in the car. So if you're still watching, thanks for sticking with us. If you have a project that you want done, you have some questions about a build that you've already done, uh, I would say give me a call or give me an email. Here's my information right here below. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram. Here's our three handles right here below. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, hit that like button, be notified when we drop a new video. So make sure you hit that bell. Also, another big thing is absolutely check out our website. Everything that you see on YouTube, we have a full breakdown, a full build log breakdown of each project. So you can see the video, the pictures that accompany the entire build. You can search by collection, uh, audio type, whether it's a hi-fi system or a conversion system. Um, you can search radar and laser, which we also did a system on this car, which I'll attach the video to the end of this. So you can see what we did on the laser and radar side of things. Thank you guys so much for continuing to give us support, following our builds, giving us feedback. We always appreciate it. And until next time.